Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Terry Ruel. Welcome to Dear Miss T. Terry, how are you this morning? I am good, and good morning to you too, Dana, and good morning to everyone out there. I am happy to be here this morning and get a chance to say Happy Veterans Day and wish all our veterans a very special, special, peaceful day, I hope, for all of them, as well as joyful. Um, it's always interesting to me that, you know, it's 11-11, and originally Veterans Day was Armistice Day, and we know that, you know, 11 in numerology is such a spiritual master number, and, of course, Armistice Day was um, stood for Peace Day, so I always want to wish all the veterans out there a day of peace. I like that. Well, and today, of course, we're not talking about peace, <laughs> mm -hmm. mainly because we have been living in pretty uh, turbulent times, and so I was hoping um, maybe we could talk about, you know, how therapists always say breakdowns are breakthroughs, and um, they can really be ways to use to... Um, learn how to grow during turbulent times. And, you know, that's not something any of us probably feel like we want to do right now, <laughs> especially if we're exhausted, you know. It's like, oh, these darn therapists, they're always wanting us to grow, and all I want to do is, you know, <laughs> escape this madness, you know. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. But we can't really escape it, I mean, not permanently, you know. We can numb out sometimes and binge on Netflix, but sooner or later, reality always finds its way back in. And, you know, we are in extremes right now, and we have been for quite a while. And, you know, extremes in energy, extremes in, um, you know, beliefs, extremes in changes, extremes in just about everything you can think of, you know, emotionally, psychologically physically and mentally, because the extremes, um, even if we're trying to stay, you know, the middle way and balance, those energies of the extremes that are struggling back and forth with each other are still going to affect us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it affects us physically and our nervous system. We've talked about, you know, constantly trying to come back to center and turn off that fight, flight, or freeze button that's getting pushed on all the time by all the turbulence out there. So, you know, imbalance makes us feel anxious. And we, it's very hard to rebalance when you feel anxiety. But if I can, you know, if we can start to think of it as, okay, if I can recognize that I'm feeling anxious, then I can start to recognize, okay, that something's out of balance. And how can I utilize this? How can I use this anxiety that's pushing me out of my comfort zone to grow? Um, because we don't grow in our comfort zone. We only grow when we're pushed out of our comfort zone. And that's another thing that therapists always say that, you know, we don't want to hear right now. But it really is the truth. Um, so if we can look at it from that, you know, perspective, like, okay, this could be a great opportunity to grow myself. It's not going to be easy, and at times it's going to be painful. But maybe I'm already suffering a lot anyway. So why don't I put some of that suffering, some of that discomfort to use for myself? And sometimes that perspective can help us um, to know that our suffering is not in vain, that there really is, we really can use it as a way to go deeper and grow more. And ultimately, you know, the, t the teachers, the great teachers tell us our purpose ultimately for all of us to be here is to alleviate suffering. 
And we can't really alleviate suffering for others if we are suffering ourselves. We have to start with alleviating that suffering for ourselves. And when we're not in our comfort zone, we feel like we're suffering. And a big reason for that often is that we feel very vulnerable. And when we feel very vulnerable, it's going to trigger any wounds that we have. And we all have them. And they can be, you know, many layered. And so we may have worked on some of those wounds and thought they were healed. um, But then they get triggered again. And we're like, oh. There it is again. And so that's why, you know, we talk so much about self-awareness because the more self-aware we can be, the more we can recognize when we're getting triggered. And right now, you know, everybody's getting triggered. I mean, mm-hmm. it's, it's very hard not to. So, you know, the messages I give myself and what I tell myself and what I do with my nervous system and everything else Um, can make the difference between whether I can recognize that trigger and use that trigger as a way to heal deeper and grow myself more, um, or I will reinforce that wound and um, armor up more, whether that armoring is by, um, you know, refusing to feel, like we were talking about numbing out, or striking out or um, uh, withdrawing um, from ourselves as well as others. It can be by any one of our defense mechanisms. So even if we don't recognize it at first, but we recognize that we're in a defense mechanism that we've used in, you know, growing up to um, try to uh, help ourselves not have to feel those wounds, then we can know, okay, uh, maybe there's a wound getting triggered here and I didn't realize it. And a lot of times we don't realize it until the next day or a week later and it was like, wow, I really got upset about that. And now I'm realizing, okay, that something must have been going on inside me. Can I go back and search through that and try to figure that out and that when we first attempt to do that we have to be very compassionate with ourselves and if right away the critical voice comes in start saying oh you jerk you really messed that one up or you know any of that criticism or any of the uh, negative kind of stuff then we can also know okay, that's another voice from the past, or that's another part of my conditioning that contributed to these wounds. So you can use every, every step you go through, every, every part of the way to grow. And um, like I say, sometimes we, we think those wounds are already pretty much healed, but if there's something, you know, extreme enough it can still trigger that, even if that wound is mostly healed, it can still trigger that. So there's no criticism, you know, there's no judgment on ourselves. And of course, the more um, compassionate we are with ourselves, the less judgmental we get on ourselves, the deeper we can go to look at that wound and to heal that wound and to be able to feel that, feel as vulnerable as we have to, to be able to really grieve that wound. And also then, we're able to do that with others. The more we can do that with ourselves, the more we'll be able to do that with others. And ultimately, we know that the only way to bring things back into balance is going to be through love and compassion. That's the only thing more powerful or the most powerful thing to bring everything back into balance. So, you know, it. one of the ways we can um, utilize our discomfort to grow is to 
just get curious about what's going on with them. Hmm. Instead of, you know, going right to, the, you know, the fear reaction or the judgment reaction, to get curious. And that's hard to do right in the moment when you're feeling that overwhelming anxiety or that overwhelming fear or frustration, whatever it is. But you can get, you know, with practice, you get better at it so that sooner and sooner you can come back to curiosity, like maybe even within the same day, but definitely within the same week. Like, okay, I'm going to get curious about this. And that also helps us to not judge it. It's just like, what is this all about? Because I know I can't heal this if I can't even look at it if I can't even go there and it's hard to go there because I say it's uncomfortable and it may be that I have to grieve that there's still some sadness some pain there from a hurt or um, you know from being so harsh on ourselves Mm -hmm. and so our inner child is going to be either like I say she might be or he might be hiding might be just mad might be scared you know so it's like going back to that um parent child um adult in us we can Mm -hmm. ask ourselves okay what's the parent voices here what's the child voices here and feelings and how i stay in my curiosity helps me stay in my adult and then i can take start to take care of my inner child Del Marie is in the chat room. Uh, uh, Del Marie Bradfield is in the chat room, Terry, and she's expressing just, you know, really what you're talking about right now. Lately, my anxiety has gotten worse, and I think it is regression anxiety from the boarding school time. And that very well could be because if there's, you know, all this discomfort around. Try to pinpoint what those fears are, and then you can, um, you know, start to more directly comfort your inner child. Like, you know, if you can talk to her, like you can ask your child questions with your dominant hand when you journal, and answer with your non-dominant hand. Like, what are you feeling today? What would you like me to know? And you can even use a crayon when you answer with your non-dominant hand. It can help you get more in touch with your inner child. Because sometimes we don't know what the fear is, and we ha- if we can identify it a little more, it can help us comfort uh, her or him more. So the more curiosity you can have, the deeper you're going to be able to go. Um, And like I say, the extremes right now are are going both ways. You know, no matter what side people are on, they are there is great fear of you know one thing or the other. Um, But it's always negative. You know, it's very hard for us. Most people right now, there's so much divisiveness to see any possibility of, you know, finding common ground and, and not being divided, which is, you know, very sad, too. And sometimes that alone can trigger, um, like for me, I think it triggered a lot of grief about, uh, which also comes from my childhood, which there's not going to be solutions to these problems. Things are never going to get better. It's just going to keep going in this circle of, you know, um, anger and whatever, war or hurt or, you know, and as a child, if you see that happening over and over in your home, that's, you know, going to get triggered. That 
maybe things don't get better and you just have to learn how to survive and then you go back into survival mode, you know, whatever that mean, meant for you growing up. Um, you know, people had those roles that we played growing up to try to survive. Sometimes that'll mean you become overly responsible, you know. Other kids became the scapegoats. They just acted out, got in trouble. They were acting out all the dysfunction that was going on in the family. Um, other children would go and hide and just stay in their room and read and just try to block everything out. Um, and then there was usually the mascot or the kid who would try to use humor to deflect everything. So we can, the more we learn about ourselves and what happened to us growing up and how we reacted to that, the more we're going to be able to understand why we might be having the reactions to what's going on right now. Terry, I have a question. And I think, <clears throat> you know, reading Del Marie's comment brings this question up. And a, a lot of people, uh, many people, I will say, have said to me, it's too late for me. It's too late for me to do the work. It's I'm too old. That happened a long time ago. I should be over it now. Or other people may say, well, isn't she kind of old to still be thinking about something that happened when she was 20? Sure. And, it, you know, that's what a lot of people think. And it really, um, it really doesn't matter our age. You know, our inner child is always inside of us. <laughs> our parents are always inside of us. And the more we do before we're on our deathbed, <laughs> yeah. the, the healthier and happier we're going to be because that stuff is there, whether we face it or not. And it is, um, it is causing us to react to things in certain ways, which most of the time we're not even conscious of. Even when we do this work, there's still so much that is going on unconsciously or subconsciously in us that if we don't go back, like you say, with curiosity <clears throat> and recheck up what's going on and look at our responses and our reactions, we're probably going to miss it. We won't even see that we were having a reaction from our conditioning. Um, you know, so... That's why it, uh, turbulent times or extremes can be so helpful because I don't know why this is the system is the way God created it, you know, but it is. It's like that's why we have spiritual awakenings. That's why we have metanoia because the suffering often has to get so great that it breaks us down. It breaks down all our defenses. And then we can break through to what is the real um, wound here. What's really going on? Who am I really? What really is still there? Um, you know, I've had clients in their 80s who, first time in their life they ever told anyone about their sexual abuse. Mm. And it liberated them. You know, it was like it didn't matter that maybe they didn't have five years left if they lived those five years free of that burden wow they didn't suffer from it anymore because once you bring things into the light they can heal you know, wow know that it's only when they're in the darkness that they have power over it <laughs> so you know it, it's never about what age we are it's just always about continuing to try allow ourselves to break open and that's a very hard thing to do um, but it's also the what liberates us because the more our heart breaks open the more the deeper we heal the deeper we love the deeper we're able to um, love others because our understanding our perspective gets way bigger and we start to see the wounds in other people. 
as well as ourselves. Mm -hmm. And when we have looked at our own wounds and felt all that pain, it's easier to have compassion for other people's pain. Even if we totally disagree with, you know, how they're responding to that pain, we can still see that that's their pain and that's about them mm -hmm. and start to think about how can I help here? How can I take care of myself but also help heal them? Because we start to see that we're all connected and that without healing each other, I, or it's going to be very hard to really completely heal ourselves. That it, it's all connected. And so when we have these, as hard as this time is right now, it's forcing all that darkness to, to the top to the light. It's, you know, forcing this poison out of the wound so we can start to really look at it and start to really try to figure out how do we start to really heal so that the changes that really need to happen so we don't have to keep going over and over and over these same things, making these same mistakes. And that happens, you know, when we can all see a bigger perspective because when we're so um, if we're in our pain and our own wounds and we don't know that we are it's we might even have some knowledge about it but we're not going to have wisdom and you know right now we might have a lot of knowledge but we need more wisdom we need the ability to for more and more people to see the bigger picture to see how this is all connected that we are all every individual is a microcosm of their family the family is my you know microcosm of the community the community is of the state the state is of the country the country of the world that everything affects everything else and so the more we can see the bigger picture the more the wisdom grows, the more we start to say, oh, we have to use this knowledge in a healthier way, um, and not just a way that matches maybe my preconceived beliefs, but how can we use, you know, how can we create wisdom that is going to be helping everyone? Because we all see things from our own point of view, from our own conditioning. You know, mm -hmm. that's why science has to duplicate everything by other people. Because no matter how objective you try to be, you're still going to see things from your own point of view. It's still going to affect your results. So we have to have many different people's wisdom. <laughs> I like that. Del Maria is sharing um, as a follow-up to that. Uh, she's saying, my trigger was work, and I just realized I had the same feeling I used to get when I was at the boarding school. And so this was something just very recent for her. Excellent. Excellent. To that your point. Such a good insight, um, Del. Such a good awareness. That is probably one of the biggest ones for so many of us because we will keep recreating our childhood um, environment until we heal our wounds. You know, I, I may have told this before, but one of my great fears was of authority figures. So what happened in my lifetime was I kept getting every authority figure you could imagine in my face. You know, it's like you say, why is this, this system, you know, it's like, why does it have to work this way? But it was through that that I started to see what a fear of authority I had and how to learn to take care of myself with them, stand up to them, and leave if I needed to leave. You know, whether it was bosses or priests or nuns or, um, you know, teachers, just any everybody I looked at as an authority figure, there was fear around and 
there was wounds around. So work is usually a really big one. Just like, you know, we recreate in our marriages our family of origins until we heal those wounds. It, and like I say, most of it is subconscious. We don't even know we're doing it until we finally start to heal some of that and we can see, oh, yeah, there was something to that. Maybe I did marry my mom or dad in some <laughs> way. <you know>? Oi. <laughs> right? That wonderful conscious hindsight, right? Being consciously exactly. aware.
head and know that we're not alone, that we're going to get through it, and that ultimately um, we're going to see a wound and heal it deeper and deeper, and that that's going to deepen our understanding and our wisdom, as well as our compassion for others. So there is great reward in doing the work, Mm -hmm. and it's not in vain. Suffering or pain is never in vain, even though it may feel like it sometimes, mm-hmm. like I say, when we're going through it. And sometimes, and, don't you think, Terry, that the whatever it is, it, it can only be addressed when we have enough uh, miles on the odometer of our life and experiences in our lives that maybe then we can address what happened to us as a child. Um, yes, I, I, it really is, you know, something that you have to experience enough often for it to become conscious enough that you are able to even know that it's there. Mm-hmm. Um, and that helps us, too, to understand, you know, we don't have to judge anyone else. Everybody's at their own stage where they're supposed to be. You know, there isn't... Uh, know any judgment on that it's like everybody's going to get to that at different times in their life and different ways and um you know the important thing is just that hopefully like you say we can get curious enough about what's going on with ourselves um or and eventually others that we can use that curiosity to help ourselves Mm -hmm. beautiful Thank you for a fantastic show once again, Terry. Oh, you're so welcome. And Thank for you. anyone who may be listening uh, in right now or in the archives and perhaps feels like they would like to get in touch with you, I know that you are retired, but you do still have some clients that you uh, talk to. How might someone be able to get a hold of you, Terry? Uh, probably the best way is either Pathways VR at Hotmail or my phone number, two. Perfect. Have a beautiful day, my friend. Thank you. You too.